And she was just basically saying that she loved me. And she was proud of me. And that she knew one day my name would be on the credits of some film. I couldn't wait to, you know, come to uni and to make films that I could show her. She never thought I'd be making this one. Being back in here is it's really strange. The grief suddenly comes back. You know, I grieve every day, I think about mum every day. And then, you know, you'll go to a certain place where you've got lots of memories of that person. And, you know, this church, you know, mum and dad got married here in 1990. And then 27 years later, we were here for mum's funeral. I remember it so vividly. I was standing right here in front of about 500 people and I wrote a poem for mum that I wanted to read out. And that was one of the toughest things I think I've ever done. Because I, I knew I wanted to do it for mum, but then, you know, that day was, it was the worst day of my life. <laughs> a bit lost for words. <laughs> Just kind of brings it all back. I took the call in my car and was literally just probably a couple of minutes away from home. Um, but he told me, I mean, it haunted me for ages, the drive home from work, I could hear, just, I played that through my head loads of times, but yeah, he just phoned me and said he was ever so sorry and that mum had died or passed away, well, I can't remember exactly, but. You obviously came to Latitude late that, late that night to tell mm -hmm. me. And I went over earlier as well with dad to get Brad yeah. and you because we couldn't get a hold yeah. of you. But, you know, w when I'd found out, you had kind of had, you know, a few hours. I mean, not in any way. Seeing you find out was one of the worst things. Seeing you and Brad both fall to the floor, you know, that was more heartbreaking than I think finding it out myself because it didn't really sink in for probably quite a few weeks. <laughs> what had happened yeah. uh, I, I don't know if it was shock or I don't know I just kind of defaulted down into this sort of mode that I had to look after everyone and get everyone together you go through the stages of grief don't you and like yeah. first of all it's a shock of what's happened and why you question it and then you get angry and you start blaming yourself and other people, even though, you know, you couldn't do anything. That, you know, now, all I'm left with is I just miss my mum. Oh, that mummy and daddy are there. Mummy and daddy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's that one? Um, Nanny Archer. Nanny Archer, yeah. Good boy. Nanny, me, Nanny Archer in Sky. Nanny Archer in Sky, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. We know not TV. Watch some TV, shall we? The 15th of July was a Saturday and the Latitude Festival, music festival, was in our region 
happens every year, like about five minutes away from where I live. I've never been before, but I really wanted to go. And yeah, last year it was like the dream lineup for me, like all of my favorite bands and artists. So me and my girlfriend, Ellen, went uh, with my brother, Brad, and his girlfriend, Shannon. Yeah, it was just a really great day. Coming out of the festival and I suddenly had all these voicemails on my phone from Dad just saying, you know, you need to come home, you need to come home. So I rang him and I don't know why, but it just occurred to me to ask, is it something to do with Mum? And he said, yes. And then I said, well, was she in hospital? Was she okay? And he just said no. When Dad got to Latitude, you know, Dan was with him. Before Dad opened his mouth, I knew that she wasn't here anymore. And hearing that, you know, hearing him say, Mum's died. You have this very surreal moment where you think you're dreaming. <laughs> because, you know, she can't. She can't be dead. That's my mum. You know, I just saw her this morning. But then all of a sudden reality kicks in and a wave of emotion. <laughs> and I just collapse to the floor. And then, then he told me she killed herself. So her day you came home from work. Yes, and yes. Found that she'd taken her life. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember you saying to me, like you didn't believe what you saw. No, at first. no. I I honestly thought. Here goes Jamie, here's another one of his props. But I thought, this time you've just gone a little bit too far. Yeah. You know, but I literally didn't look first because I, you just don't believe what you're seeing. You know, it's just... And I thought, well, that can't be Mum because she'd have no idea how to do that sort of thing. You know, I mean, she, how would she know? Well, you can't explain, you can't put into words what that visual was, you know, which just doesn't go away. One thing to learn from anything is just listen to somebody, make them talk to you, and just be aware that, you know, and it is good to talk. Well, that's the thing, like, the reason I want to make this documentary is, you know, if I would have seen something and heard someone else's mm. story in the past, mm. and kind of how, you know, secretive people with depression mm, can I be know. about their depression, mm. that may be made have made me think our oh, mum's crying a lot mm. there's something wrong mm. but the thing is like we had no idea what to look for well, can you remember when we went to the doctors quite soon after mum's pass and we all went to the doctors as a family just to have a chat with the doctor and the doctor said that the ones who actually do it are the silent ones you know they're the ones who go slip under the radar we have two choices in life don't we whether we got to sink or swim and I think we're all swimmers and we have to make, try and make life the best we can. Mm -hmm.